Welcome to Behind the Ride with the Coal Collective. So here we are again, end of another season. Nights are drawing in, unfortunately, it's a time of the year which I particularly struggle with. So uh, I thought I'd give you a few hints and tips on how I personally uh, try to survive winter. Uh, starting with the bike, you notice it looks pretty similar to the uh, Evo I'm riding, but it's actually a, a Supercross from Cannondale. So it's their cyclocross bike. Um, and I've actually raced this quite a lot as well, but I've sort of uh, converted it now into my, my sort of winter bike, which gets me through these darker months. Um, and things which I particularly like about it and why I've spec'd it out like this, I've got wider tyres. Uh, these are 40 mil. They're actually the Mavic All-Road uh, tyre, All-Road XL and All-Road wheel. Uh, they go together really nicely um, in the winter, obviously uh, debris on the road, leaves, branches, um, often wet out unfortunately, you have to go out in the rain occasionally, um, more, than, uh, more than my first year of, of damp rides. And uh, running a wider tyre, obviously the road bike's either 25 or a 28, but uh, running a 40 means I can keep the, the pressures much, much lower. Uh, it's a lot more comfortable, so you have a lot more traction. So really just makes the bike feel a lot more planted um, in all these conditions which we're thrown out over winter. Um, and it's nice because you can actually just dive off road as well and go down dirt tracks and just have a bit of fun as well. So it doesn't limit you quite as much as when you're on the, uh, on the road bike. So um, that's why I've got uh, those on. In terms of uh, just the grime and everything that's thrown up, uh, cleaning the bike and that, it's uh, something which you have to do. You've got to keep it in good working order, but uh, you, know, you want to limit it as much as possible. You want to get the ride time in. And uh, you'll see that I've got a single ring on the front, uh, so no front dralia. Yeah, I mean, it's single ring, it's a 40 tooth chain ring, um, and I've got a 32 on the back. So gearing wise, it means that on the downhills, I'm spinning a bit more, uh, which is actually good because it keeps you warm. Uh, on the uphills, I'm probably grinding a bit more. Uh, it gives me a little bit of a chance to work on my pedaling technique as well. So high cadence and also some light, low cadence uh, seated drills as well. So um, the gearing, you know, without a front dralia, it's a little bit less for, for the, the mud to get uh, clogged up and something else to, to another moving part to go wrong. Um, so it keeps it nice and clean and I can, you know, spray it off nicely afterwards and get it cleaned up, um, which means it's, it's, it's pretty easy to maintain, a little bit less to go wrong. Um, being the Supercross, the, uh, the actual sort of feel of the bike is a little bit more forgiving on the road, um, not quite as race orientated as the Evo, so, you know, slightly sort of slower in steering and just feels a bit more planted uh, across the board. So, got on really well with it and, you know, it's, it's my sort of go-to bike now when it comes to, to the darker months of the year. Now, with the wider tyres, um, limited gearing, uh, another thing which I really like about this bike, and it may actually sound a bit counterintuitive, is it's slower on the road, uh, obviously, uh, lower pressures and, and more traction. Um, and a good thing about that is not only do you get, uh, because it's, it's, it's slightly harder to pedal, um, you get a hard workout, but also the wind chill factor. So you'll notice that when you're really zipping along on the road, that wind chill which hits you really sort of cools you down, your core, your extremities. So just having a bike which is slightly sort of heavier, um, you know, lower pressures in the tyres, which obviously have the benefits when you're, you're riding in the winter, but as well as giving you a better workout, having less wind chill actually keeps you warmer. So, you know, there are a few, uh, a, bit, a little bit of method in the madness sometimes at having a bike that's a bit slower than you'd normally ride. Um, and the great thing is when you come back into spring and summer and you jump on the road bike, you feel, uh, yeah, you feel 10 times better as well. So it's all a bit of a mind game as well, but uh, I found that, uh, yeah, those extra little bits that help me get through the winter, make riding a little bit more enjoyable, uh, a bit more comfortable, a bit safer, good traction, less wind chill. Uh, it all adds up bit by bit just to, to, to get you through and, and hopefully uh, keep you on the road. Now you may have seen actually uh, from some of the videos that I run the, the Trace and Trace R uh, front and back lights from Exposure Lights. Uh, and these are really great safety lights. So pretty much you can use them any time of the year. I run them all the way through the summer as well because um, at the end of the day you want to be uh, safe and be seen for other road users. And on their daybright mode they've got a, a really unique flash pattern. So you can see half a kilometre, a kilometre up the road. Um, you've got 75 lumens at the back, 110 lumens at the front, which you know, doesn't sound that much, but uh, believe me, even in the height of summer, just having that little flash in the distance and making sure that other road users, cars, bikes uh, and, and people out there can see you for, from a long way out um, definitely makes me feel a lot safer. Um, but obviously as we come into the winter and a little bit more night riding comes in because it's, it's just a, a blast, 
Uh, I've got a little bit more firepower at the front now. So it's the uh, Strada SB, which is the Strada Super Bright. Um, that's up to 1500 lumens. So um, really, um, I haven't got any excuses uh, on the country lanes, uh, blasting up and down hills. Uh, this is the, uh, the light of choice. Um, some really nice, unique features as well. You've got 180 degree uh, sort of slots here, so you get side visibility as well. Um, again, kind of like you want to try and maximize uh, not only your own light out front, but other people looking from the side, cars coming in from the side, they, you want to give maximum visibility to yourself. Uh, and with the 180 degree as well, it's nice because the light comes out the side as well. Uh, it's actually a unique um, beam pattern as well for the road, so it's been specifically designed ex exactly for the riding which, I, which I've got on my doorstep, which is rural country lanes, um, steep, steep climbs, steep descents, twists and turns, and I've just been absolutely blasting around with it for the last uh, couple of weeks now since the clock's changed. And yeah, there's no limitation really. I, <laughs> I can pretty much go as fast as my little legs will, will take me with that light up front. So it's been, uh, it's been awesome. And the Trace R at the back, which I'm using, has actually got a couple of really nice new features for the latest model. Uh, React, which means uh, as you brake, the light actually flares. So it's a little bit like a brake light. Um, and the peloton mode, so uh, if someone's behind you and their light shines on it, it detects that the, the ambient light has increased and it'll actually dim the light slightly, so it stops sort of glaring people behind you as well, which sometimes, I mean, the lights are so bright that uh, if you're following someone and it's flashing, you know, sometimes you get the red spot in your eyes. So, uh, yeah, just a little bit more user-friendly for people, whether you're behind or actually using it yourself. Um, but I thought that it was a nice couple of nice little touches, actually, from the guys at Exposure Light. So uh, thanks very much for keeping me, me safe and, and, and sound in the, in the winter. in the warmth now so which is a good thing because it's getting a bit chilly out there uh, so it's a good segue just to talk a little bit about clothing and um, what to look for with your winter clothing and how to prep up for, for one of those darker darker day rides um, there's a couple of things to consider uh, one is obviously visibility and the other is actually just trying to sort of survive the elements from the cold um, to the rain, to the wind. Uh, they're all factors to consider. And there's kit which you should sort of have a, a look at and, and try and think about um, certain details on that kit which will make your ride all the better. So starting off with uh, visibility, um, obviously on the bike you've got the lights and then on the body, you can actually put some lights on as well, helmet, um, uh, back of the helmet, back of the jersey, but uh, visibility is key. So um, garments which are, are brighter, it's kind of a bit obvious really, but um, you know, there is this sort of trend of everything being black and stealth and you know, it, when it comes to the winter, you actually want to be seen. So I've got quite a nice uh, assortment of much brighter clothing, um, yellows and oranges and, and uh, yeah, really sort of clothing that's going to pop when a, another road user sees you. Um, and then you can actually see some of the, the details, uh, reflective piping around the arms, um, some reflective detailing on the back, uh, even on the gloves, right on the fingertips. So when you're signaling left and right, you know, you can actually get a little bit of extra visibility. They've got some brightness on them as well with yellow. Um, you know, it's, so it's all about just trying to make sure that if a car headlight goes on you, then you're going to actually be seen. So um, you're togged up on the bike, make sure you're togged up on the body as well. Um, and actually a really nice uh, jacket that I've been using quite a bit um, from the Mavic range. It's the Cosmic Pro Soft Shell. Uh, and a number of these, uh, they've got a couple of jackets in the range where you can actually put your smartphone in the back. It's got a, a sort of see-through rear pocket, zip, waterproof. And you can, they've got their own app. It's just an extra safety measure. So I wouldn't uh, say use this instead of bike lights or anything like that, but it's just something extra that's gonna help increase your visibility. And you can see on the back of the, uh, the jacket here, all the reflective panels. It's got the, uh, the sleeves and the, uh, the shoulders, which are a bright yellow as well. And then all the way across on the front. So as soon as any light hits that, you're gonna glow up like a, like a beacon. Uh, these are just a couple of my favorite items. So uh, the trick with, with all your winter kit is understanding what conditions you've got. Um, so if it's particularly wet, then you know, you're gonna bring out your rain gear um, with taped seams. And I've yet to find, I mean, my extremities generally do suffer quite a lot. Um, so I'll probably use thicker gloves than I, 
I might, you might assume on a, on a, on a day with the temperature drops. Um, same with my feet, uh, it's just the way it is. So I try and keep my core as warm as possible. Um, so I'll layer up. I'll start with a decent base layer. Um, so long sleeve base layer, uh, that'll be the first thing on. And then I'll go, you know, depending on what the conditions are for that day, it'll be a mid-weight weight jersey or a thicker weight jersey. Might even put the, the gilet on over the top at the very end. Um, it's the last piece. It's nice and bright, so it kind of it's very versatile, and you can throw that in your back pocket as well, so it sort of scrunches down quite small. Um, so that's been living with me uh, for quite extensively over the last winter or so. Um, and by layering up, it means I can regulate my body temperature that much more. So I've got, you know, unzipping, maybe two to three layers at least. Uh, and then, yeah, just regulating throughout the ride, obviously hilly out here. So as you're climbing, uh, you generate a lot, a lot more heat. So therefore you're much more sweaty. You're going slower, so you have less wind chill. And then on the descents, the roll reversal. So you're, you're wet by the top because of the sweat. And then you're having to descend down. So it's kind of like looking uh, with wind stopping materials at the front um, to keep, your, the, keep the wind out. So, you know, a lot of, a lot of protection on your core. And then uh, more breathability uh, on some jackets they have more breathability at the back so as the the wind hits the front with the wind stopper it keeps that part nice and nice and warm but uh, still allows you to breathe and, and that sweat and everything to start sort of drying out as you descend or as you sort of cool off from a hard effort so uh, a couple of my favorite items yeah the gilet for sure um, because it's a it's a it's just a very versatile piece being so bright means that you can throw it on over a jacket on the uh, the lighter weight days um, thicker gloves for me. Uh, I've got a whole array of gloves, um, and in the in the very darkest depths when it is is super wet, the cold's actually not that bad. Um, it's just when you mix in cold and and rain, and I've got neoprene gloves and waterproof gloves and everything, and and occasionally I'll actually take out two pairs of gloves because I just I do suffer with my hands so. Uh, they do get cold and then I lose dexterity, so I might put an extra pair of gloves in and sort of change half, halfway around the ride. Um, they're pretty extreme those days, but it's, it's been known to happen. Um, and a couple of other items that, uh, that I really like actually, which are overlooked, are the trusty neck warmer. And I've got a couple of different types. Um, this, uh, this one's got uh, little holes in so you can breathe out of it nicer. And uh, yeah, this is a piece that it's so simple, but um, certainly in the mountains, you have it around your neck and uh, you know, on the climb, it's, it just keeps you nice and warm. But then on the descent, I end up just pulling it straight up over my ears pretty much. And just with your glasses on, you're, uh, you're almost completely covered. So it's a simple piece, uh, not expensive, but just keeps the wind chill from going out down your neck, even on a, a sort of high collar jacket. And I've just, I've, it's just a creature comfort now. So as soon as I leave in the winter, the neck warmer goes on. And sort of keeping bulk down, because the name of the game is to try and sort of be warm and comfortable. So layering up, um, depending on, I mean, I've got, I've got a nice selection of base layers, different weights, jackets, different weights. Um, wind stopper, if it's, if it's windy out, you know, wind stopper garments. So at the front, you're, you're gonna try and keep your, your core warmer all the way through to fully waterproof jackets. So uh, the seams are taped, so no water gets in, um, which, uh, which can obviously cause you to, uh, to, to sweat a little more, but that's when you can regulate it with zips and uh, to keep your, your temperature where you need it to be. Um, and yeah, just a, a couple of nice items, which uh, I try and keep my kit as, as as light as possible um, I do you know you have to the, the technologies now which are which have advanced mean that kit is actually a lot lighter weight than it used to be uh, I definitely remember back in the day and you know kit was so bulky because it, it needed to be warm but it's not really the case now so even these lighter weight jerseys can can feel really warm when you're when you're out in the cold um, and just from a bulk point of view I actually use quite a lot um, uh, thermal shorts so these are sort of brushed thermal shorts and then I marry it up with a thermal legging and it's just I mean they give you know, they give the same benefit as a tight but I just feel that they're, they they just they feel lighter weight and they just feel that much more comfortable so I spend a lot of the winter um, only occasionally now am I in, in tights actually now I've found that combination and it just works for me so again nice uh, reflective logo on there so you know when you're pedaling and your legs are going up and down you can get nice and, and visible to anyone else out there um, 
So that's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a small snapshot of, of some of my key items uh, from gloves to thermal shorts to leggings to, you know, jackets with uh, extra vision um, features. And, you know, these are the things that I've sort of found have, have helped me in the winter not only be safe to other road users, but also feel safe myself. So if I feel safe when I'm leaving the door with the, the bike I'm on and, and how I've spec that out and the lights which I've got and then the kit, enough vision on the kit, then, you know, I feel that I'm doing as best as I can to, to make sure that I'm going to come back safe as well and, and comfortable. So, you know, as I say, a brief snapshot because kit's quite exten extensive, especially uh, when you get into the, the realms of winter and there's many different conditions. But as long as you're thinking, you know, about what you're generally going to be riding in and trying to get a, a couple of good, good core items for that. So whether it's windstopper, um, you're going to be spending a lot of time in the rain or if it's just, you know, the deep freeze sort of kicks in, make sure you've got the thermal items and the, uh, the protective items that you might need. And um, fingers crossed it will keep you on the road for that much longer. Um, what I'll do is I'll, I'll put a, a quick list together and I'll put that in the, uh, the video notes. So um, what I've shown here, if anyone's interested in knowing more, then I'll list out what I've got and I'll also list out some of my sort of key items which I, which I spoke about on the bike as well. So, um, but if you do have any questions, then just give me a shout. I'll do my best to help. And uh, yeah, hopefully you found it interesting and it can help you get out on the road even in the, the darkest depths of uh, winter. So uh, yeah, with that, good luck, enjoy. Until the next time, ride safe.